Now there's nothing that will establish your street credibility as a pit master like cooking on one of these offset smokers. So if you already own an offset, then uh, I hope you find some value in this video. If you don't, maybe this uh, video will spark some interest and you'll get into offset barbecue uh, as well. So why a stick burner? Live fire cooking with just wood, it delivers the best results. It's just simple as that. Smoke provides a really terrific flavor and the wood is your seasoning. And of course it's in our DNA because we've been cooking with live fire as humans for millions of years or at least that's what our science books told us. So the design is pretty simple or it should be. Uh, you've got the fire box over here. That's where the fire is going to hang out. Your heat source is and it will flow through the cooking chamber and your cooking chamber is here where you're going to place your meat. You can have an additional second rack for you know more real estate to put meat on and then it will flow out of your smokestack and of course this is the smokestack or chimney and we'll keep the baffle on top of it wide open i like the rounded firebox it's got good heat dispersion with the rounded firebox your coals will sit down on the bottom and your wood can sit on top of them and they'll combust pretty good the heat flows out of the gap in between the cooking chamber and the firebox referred to as the throat most throats have a baffle plate and will protect the early part of the grate from the direct heat blow some smokers use a tuning plate which are long plates with scattered holes but that technically makes a smoker a bottom flow smoker not a horizontal smoker to have outstanding results with an offset cooker you're going to have a lot of variables it all starts with really good wood. If you don't live in a place or can't get your hands on wood that is the popular cook wood, you can always find it in your local big box retailer that sells barbecue supplies. It comes in a bag, they're in small chunks, and of course you can get just about anything that's harvested anywhere around the United States. There are several different methods you can use to actually start your fire. Um, I have this bucket here that I keep a lot of dry splits in. I keep it indoors. It's got little small pieces. I've got butcher paper. It's the primitive way to start a fire. I like doing that. Another method would be to use this little chimney fire starter. This is what you put lump coals or charcoal in. You light it from underneath and then you pour them into your smoker and then you can start from there putting wood on. And there's a third way that you can start a fire. It's kind of a cheat, but you'll see this on some of the smokers. You just hook a regular grill propane tank up to it. You light your your fire and then you throw some wood on it of course small pieces of wood and it will ignite and uh, once you get the wood lit and uh, going pretty good then you can turn the liquid propane tank off and remove it there's a few products that you don't want to start your fire with and definitely this one right here is one of them you don't want to use lighter fluid that's going to leave a petroleum or a fuel taste in your food and a smell and it'll make it almost uh, uneatable. There are some elements that can make barbecue a little bit more challenging using an offset, and that is when you have direct wind blowing straight in your firebox. Bottom line is you wanna establish a really good coal bed, so when you introduce new wood, it will combust, and of course, you'll have delicious barbecue. Today, we're gonna to use this lump coal. I've got some butcher paper, and I've put it in the bottom of the chimney here. And we'll just get this guy going here. I will just empty on another piece of butcher paper just to make sure. I'm just gonna stack some wood in here because we wanna start our fire off really slow, grow the coal bed. So now we've added some wood, just some little tiny splits out of our starter wood. This is our starter wood box. And we're just gonna slowly introduce these little splits in here. So now we've got the cowboy grill door down, we've got the chamber door down, we've got the smokestack wide open. We're still burning a little bit dirty, but that's just because we haven't established our coal bed quite yet. We've only been about 20 minutes into a fire. We're ready to start adding wood. I wanna just show you here. This is like what I grabbed out of the wood pile. Uh, I grabbed these two pieces. Now, this is a backyard cooker, smaller firebox, even though this firebox is a little bit bigger than most that you'll find. Um, this is a really big piece of wood. It's going to have a lot of trouble combusting. It's actually going to end up 
uh, probably smoldering and doing more damage to your cook than anything. You don't want to chance it. You just basically want to go with small pieces like this, which I use a chopped radial saw. And not only do I cut these down to about 14 inches, but I also split them and it makes it really good size for the firebox and I'll just set it on top of the coals like so. Now I've got a little hack that I do. I'll take the firewood and I'll just stick it inside the firebox sometimes, not near the coals, and that will start to dry it out. Also, you can take and put the wood on top of your firebox and that will also dry it out. So if you say I'm gonna put a log in and in 25 minutes I'll come back, I'll put another log in, that doesn't work. It's not a timing thing with the clock. It's more about looking at the wood, looking at your coal bed, taking a lot of notes. I always recommend taking a lot of notes, especially working with an offset cooker. You know, what's the temperature? Today it's 25 degrees. It's really windy, it's dry, there's no humidity. You wanna write that, notate that, what wood we're using. Today we're using some post oak. And it's more about just taking notes so you, the next cook you're gonna make a lot more improvements and your results are going to go way up. So yeah, the smoke's looking pretty good. So we got a nice, real clear, little bit of a blue smoke coming out. Um, it's really windy today. I really like to cook when it's not windy based upon just seeing the smoke come out straight and it funnels almost in a way. But uh, Smokestacks drawn, it's just really windy and cold outside. And it's so cold out here that this feels good on my hands. It's 250 to 260 degrees. I just put another piece of wood on. We're holding pretty good. That's looking really good. That's exactly where you want it. That's what managing the fire is all about. So we're getting some of that combustion, which is turning into smoke. And of course, when you put a log on, you're gonna get a little bit more darker color smoke, more of a light blue. Smoke looks really good. The process I have is to either, if you have a baffle on the side, you can rotate it and just pull in air that way. The, the smoker doesn't need a whole lot of air to get in. It's not wind blowing in, it's actually air being pulled in from the smokestack. Looking good. In conclusion, it's pretty simple. An offset smoker can be a ton of fun. If you watch and manage your fire, keep an eye on the smokestack and the thermometers, doesn't matter what's inside this cooking chamber, the results are gonna be great. If you don't have an offset smoker and you're thinking about getting one, these things are a whole lot of fun. The results that you can get out with the food is amazing. On top of that, I enjoy kind of being one with uh, my cooker. I'll see you on the next video.